Nvidia is a youngster when compared to other semiconductor leaders. It was founded in 1993 and the company's impact on the world of technology has been vast already. According to the Steam hardware survey, over 80% of users have an Nvidia graphics card in their gaming PCs, while Passmart says over 60% of users have an Nvidia product. But there was a ton of work involved in getting to that level. The company's first chip called the NV1 seemed brilliant at the time of its release in 1995. It offered video acceleration, 3D acceleration, a built-in sound card, and a gamepad port. However, the NV1 relied on quadratic texture mapping as opposed to triangle polygon rendering, which resulted in Nvidia's big debut becoming a flop. Lesson learned as the chips that followed included some surefire hits. This is David from TechSpot and these are the top 10 most significant NVIDIA GPUs of all time. NVIDIA Riva 128 An acronym for Real-Time Interactive Video and Animation Accelerator, the Riva 128 put everyone on notice. Featuring support for DirectX 5 and OpenGL, the Riva 128 didn't repeat the same mistakes as the NV1. It seemed future-proof from the get-go, with 4 megabytes of SGRAM and AGP2X support. At the time, it could keep up with the 3DFX Voodoo cards, which were the fastest cards on the market. Over a million units shipped within the first four months of the Riva 128 release, cementing its importance as a product and a company. NVIDIA Riva TNT2 The successor to the Riva 128 the TNT was good but was still outperformed by 3DFX, but the following year, NVIDIA delivered the TNT2 with several significant improvements. A process shrink to 250nm allowed for higher clock speeds. While the chip supported larger textures, a 32-bit Z buffer, AGP4X, and a maximum of 32 megabytes of memory. Compared to rival products from 3DFX, the TNT2 featured better support for DirectX and OpenGL and packed excellent image quality with 32-bit color. Gamers took notice. NVIDIA GeForce 256 DDR In 1999, NVIDIA introduced the first GeForce chip, known as the GeForce 256. There were two variants, with the high-end DDR model gaining most of the attention. The GeForce 256 featured a transformation and lighting engine, or TNL, that allowed the chip to handle calculations previously covered by the CPU. TNL allowed the card to be paired with a slower processor, yet still delivered excellent performance. While critics and rivals said the technology wasn't necessary, it eventually became commonplace and found in nearly every graphics card on the market. The GeForce 256 was also the basis for the first Quadro product for computer-aided design. This line of products opened up a whole new and lucrative market for NVIDIA. NVIDIA GeForce 6800 series The early 2000s turned into a royal rumble between ATI and NVIDIA, as they won up each other through the GeForce 2, 3, and 4 eras. After ATI dropped the Radeon 9700 and impressed everyone, NVIDIA had to throw a haymaker of its own, and thus the GeForce 6800 was introduced. As one of the early products to sport GDDR3, the GeForce 6800 was a speed demon even dismissing ATI's X800 XT with better shader model support and 32-bit flow point precision compared to the Radeon. Furthermore, since Nvidia had acquired 3D effects, they began implementing features and technology from the former graphics company. One major part of 3D effects' portfolio was SLI, which linked two video cards and boosted the available 3D processing power. In 2004, Nvidia modernized this feature and reintroduced it with many enthusiasts pairing 6800s to create the ultimate gaming PC. Nvidia GeForce 8800 series Two years after the GeForce 6800, Nvidia introduced the new GeForce 8800 series. This new graphics card was an absolute beast of a gaming GPU, with up to 128 streaming processors, a 575MHz core, a 1.35GHz shutter clock, and 768MB of GDDR3, it could actually outpace a dual GPU flagship from the previous generation. It was one of the first products to use a unified shader architecture. The GeForce 8 series was considered fast even years after its initial debut. Not everything was gravy, as a significant number of this series' chips suffered from an overheating issue that led to many failures. 
NVIDIA GeForce GTX 295. Just before the 2010s came around, dual GPU boards became a hot commodity, and AMD was pretty aggressive with its ATI Radeon 4870 X2. To rival that, NVIDIA brought out the GeForce GTX 295, which put two of its GeForce 200 chips on a single board. With the right drivers, this was the fastest graphics card money could buy, and at $500, it could outperform a pair of GTX 260s when a single one had an MSRP of $450, making it a bargain to enthusiasts. NVIDIA GeForce GTX 580 While the GeForce GTX 480 launch didn't go as planned, all was well with its successor known as the GTX 580. A fully unleashed Fermi architecture meant 16 stream multiprocessor clusters, 6 active 64-bit memory controllers, and full-speed FP16 filtering. This graphics card was the real deal and enough to hold off AMD for a while. The top-tier dual GPU GTX 590 was met with scathing reviews due to poor stability and the inability to upstage the Radeon HD 6990. NVIDIA Tegra X1 SoC NVIDIA had been making products for PC enthusiasts design professionals, and even supercomputers and AI researchers. But with Tegra SoCs, it effectively made the jump into the world of mobile computing. The ARM-based Tegra lineup was designed for smartphones and tablets, but things went beyond that, and the extra processing power of the SoC went to good use in the Nintendo Switch. The success of the Switch has been off the charts, with nearly 70 million units sold since 2017. Each portable console packs the Tegra X1, which pairs an ARM V8 ARM Cortex A57 quad core with a Maxwell based 256 core GPU. NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 The 16 nanometer GeForce GTX 1080 series was extremely influential and a big milestone for the GPU maker, showcasing NVIDIA's might and design expertise. The Pascal architecture was well ahead of the competition. So much so, that GeForce GTX 10 cards remained in contention for several years which is almost an anomaly in the graphics market. The GTX 1080 became the benchmark to beat, and even the next generation of NVIDIA GPUs struggled to show any significant improvement in raster performance. Speedy GDDR5X memory was matched with 2560 cores in the GTX 1080 and 3584 cores in the GTX 1080 Ti leading to eye-popping frame rates even as you increase resolutions. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 The GTX 1080 was followed by the Turing Power RTX 20 series, which implemented real-time hardware ray tracing for the first time in a consumer-oriented video card. However, at the time of its release, there were very few games with ray tracing features, and in general, the RTX 20 series didn't feel like a significant enough jump from the GTX 10 series. NVIDIA upped the ante with the RTX 30 series, which used the Ampere architecture leading the RTX 3080 to become the ultimate gaming card regardless of resolution or enabling demanding ray tracing features when using DLSS. The 3080 has 28.3 billion transistors and 8704 cores clocked up to 1.7 GHz, delivering a big 70% performance jump over the RTX 2080 at 4K. On the less positive side, the card features just 10GB of memory, although it is the faster GDDR6X kind. It's also power hungry, but it's very fast and if you were to buy it for the $700 MSRP, which has been almost impossible due to many circumstances, it could even be argued it's a great value thanks to its low cost per frame. Nvidia has grown into a graphics giant and beyond, by steadily churning out impressive and innovative products for computer gamers and enthusiasts but most recently also providing solutions for automakers, creative studios, and researchers, not to mention the impending acquisition of ARM. Thanks for watching this list of the top 10 most significant NVIDIA GPUs of all time. As always, if you like our videos, be sure to hit the subscribe and notification buttons to be notified when new videos release. For more tech news and in-depth analysis, head on over to techspot.com.